children that Indian Airlines Flight 5814 has been hijacked. There is still no information on the identity of these men or their demands. The plane hijacked. Christmas Eve, 1999. For the passengers on this Indian Airlines flight, a short one and a quarter hour journey to New Delhi is about to turn into days of terror. Not all will reach their destination alive. But the events which are about to unfold go beyond these individuals. When matters here reach their ultimate conclusion, there will be deadly consequences across the world. And another chapter would be written in the history of terror. At the Tribhuvan International Airport in Kathmandu, Nepal, Indian Airlines flight IC-814 is being ready for departure. It's a short one-hour, 20-minute flight to New Delhi, India. In the cockpit, Captain Sharan, co-pilot Singh and flight engineer Jagir are carrying out their pre-flight checks. Many of the 178 passengers on board are returning from short holidays in Nepal. The mood is light, it's Christmas Eve, and the new millennium is only a week away. When IC-814 departs Kathmandu soon after 4 p.m., there is little indication that this flight will be anything other than routine. In a short while, it crosses into Indian airspace. cabin, flight attendants commence the drink service. On a flight as short as this, they need to be efficient and quick. The service on the Kathmandu Delhi sector was proceeding smoothly. I decided to offer some tea coffee to the captains. Chief steward Anil Sharma enters the cockpit to serve the pilot's tea. By the time he steps out, the lives of everyone on board IC-814 would have changed forever. The moment I turned my face towards the galley, I saw somebody wearing a mask, a bespectacled, short statured fellow. My first reaction was to uh, inform the captains. I moved my hand towards the intercom. When he was going back, immediately I could see one person entering the cockpit. For a second, I was just scared. I could understand the situation that we have been hiding. He said, uh, there should not be any movement. Fly the plane towards west only. But he isn't the only one. In fact, there are four other heavily armed hijackers and they've taken over the aircraft with ruthless efficiency. I could hear voices saying, throw the food down, throw it down quick, under your seats. They were screaming loudly, so we started throwing the food down. Then we were told to change the seats. Children went away from me because they were sitting at the back now. So, you know, we sort of lost contact and I said, let's see what they do. It was not possible for me to react in any way because alone I couldn't have done anything. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain, the shuttle. Our plane has been hijacked. Please be patient and listen to the hijack. 
Biggest uh, worry was my daughter. What's happening to my daughter? Because she was not sitting with me; she was far away. Then I removed my blindfold and I stood up like this, with my hands up. And within uh, two seconds, and this guy was on me with his revolver pointing at me. He said, "I'll you sit down, otherwise I'll kill you. I'll shoot you." That is the time when he found my voice a little, you know, with anger and you know that tenor was there. that worry and everything and i think he realized that this man means business you know then he said see quickly and sit down i turned around looked at them they were both there sitting i saw them and i sat down i must in the cockpit Captain Sharon is finding it harder to convince the hijackers that there isn't enough fuel to fly to Lahore, Pakistan, their preferred destination. He asked about the fuel. How much fuel you have? I said uh, we have fuel up to Delhi. If you cannot land in Delhi, where will you go? What is your alternate? So he knew that our alternate is Bombay or Ahmedabad. So I said uh, Ahmedabad. Then he said, uh, "If you can go to Ahmedabad or Bombay, why can't you go to Lahore? Lahore is nearer than Bombay from Delhi." As night falls across the Indian subcontinent, IC eight one four is still flying west. Its destination unknown. On board are one hundred and eighty nine passengers and crew, held hostage by a group of dangerous armed men. In the cockpit. Captain Sharon is playing a dangerous game of his own. Unseen by the hijackers, he's triggered an emergency transponder, letting Indian air traffic controllers know that IC eight one four has been hijacked. On board IC eight one four. The captain and the hijackers are locked in a battle of wits. The hijackers want the plane to be flown to Lahore, Pakistan. The captain, though, wants to avoid going to Pakistan at any cost. It's been just six months since India and Pakistan fought a bloody war in Kargil, Kashmir, leaving hundreds dead on both sides. The scars haven't as yet healed. I did never wanted to go to Lahore because I never wanted to cross my territory. I wanted to land wherever uh, I can land in India only, so that uh, security people can do something. Making his case stronger is the Lahore ATC, which refuses to accept the plane. In fact, Lahore shuts down its airspace completely, even to its own planes. Meanwhile, in the passenger cabin, a sinister exercise is underway. Get up, I say. Hey, ho! Eight male passengers are separated from the others and moved to the executive cabin. Amongst them is 27-year-old Ripan Katia, who is returning from his honeymoon with his bride Rachna. Yesterday, I took a burger and I took a burger. So, 